What I'd like you, uh, to tell you about today is how we believe urban mining, you know, so not upstream mining, down the other end, gives our investors the lowest risk, best exposure to the EV megatrend and critical materials more generally. I think the purpose of this slide is, uh, you know, you get to the point and if you think our inherent value, like me, is many times our market cap, then you probably should speak to a broker before doing anything. From Canaccord, of course. So, you know, who are we and where do we come from? So, you know, I, I think I presented uh, 2002, 2003, we developed a, a small underground gold mine 100 kilometres north of Kalgoorlie. I think that was probably a, a draw, I'll call that one. Then we went to large open pit gold mining, uh, big mill single pit, I'll call that a loss. We then developed Mount Marion into what is the world's second largest hard rock source of lithium, which I'll call a win. And then soon in the construction, we, we had a look at what was next. And um, we wanted more exposure to the thematic. I mean, in your hands, at the moment is one of the greatest cobalt deposits in the world. So in your Apple iPhone, the battery in that's 20% by weight cobalt. So we moved into recycling and now we've transitioned from a hard rock miner to an urban miner and we're building the world's first integrated battery recycling plant for a Western car maker, Mercedes-Benz in Germany. So why? So, you know, what you've got with these batteries, I mean, we're in an uncertain world, let's, let's deal with what the certainties are. For whatever reason, certainly economic, EVs are taking over the world. In terms of penetration rate, this year we are still on track for 17 million EVs. There will be less internal combustion engine cars. China, uh, Honda announced last week that they're turning off 1.2 million cars, internal combustion art cars made in a joint venture in China. So for economic purposes, the EVs are a better value. And you heard from, from Ken that, you know, we're now past uh, purchase price or sticker shock. So we've got access to the world's fastest growing ore body. These batteries wear out and they wear out every day. So I've got, as they make these batteries, there's lots of production scrap and then end of life is getting closer every day. So I've got a growing ore body and fantastic value in, in there. So if I've got a tonne of these car batteries, it's the same as having a tonne of ore in front of a concentrator that's 15% nickel, 15% copper, 2% cobalt, and 2% lithium. It's pretty hard not to make money off it. And having been a gold miner, and you know, the trends, you know, grades are getting lower, strip ratios are getting higher, you know, your, your costs go in one direction. Unfortunately, the gold price has accelerated faster. But in terms of planning long term, if I'm going recycling and I'm getting back all my production credits, um, what I find myself is down the bottom end of the cost curve long term, and I actually don't care what the lithium price is because I actually don't want to recycle. I want to build plants for recyclers. So that's essentially what we've done. We've developed a, a different technologies around different critical materials, but our flagship is the battery recycling. So. We developed the process in Australia, solvent extraction based, uh, and what we've done is the background there, you've got what we're actually building for Mercedes-Benz, but you know, what do we do? Those plants and urban mining uh, enable circular supply chains that the world needs because China dominates 80 plus percent of the supply chain. We ensure that social license, uh, regulatory compliance can be met. Two, we make them money. So we deliver them the lowest sustainable cost for their key battery materials. Uh, and then we've got to invest money back in the continuous improvement. So we'll go through the flagship plant that we're building for Mercedes-Benz. That triggers then product readiness for our larger commercial plants. We've got a fantastic pipeline of customers there. And then we've got some other technologies that I won't address today. So our business is building world-class battery recycling plants. I don't want to recycle, I don't want to worry about getting the feed, I don't worry about prices. All I know, absolutely, there is a requirement to recycle. In Europe, they actually do it, like in Perth, your recycling bin goes to the same place as your general waste, so, you know, we don't really do it in Australia. So our total addressable market is growing by 25% per annum, which is a fantastic rate. And our target market, our prime target market, 
is in Europe. So if I have a look at Europe, by 2030, there'll be about a trillion US dollars, sorry, a trillion Australian dollars, worth of recoverable materials in lithium batteries, laptops, phones, e-scooters, cars. So to put that into perspective, you're looking, you're looking at a couple of hundred million ounces of gold, and the ore body's more than three ounces a tonne. But you need to have a special plant to get it out, and that's where we come in. So we developed this flow sheet. That's our total IP package, discharging, dismantling, shredding them up. Our patents are all around the hydromet process. We have an early mover advantage because we started in 2016. So five national phase grant of patents, I think 12 in process. But then how do you get these to the market? Like, we're based in WA, we've got some smart guys, but how do we deliver these solutions? So we partnered with a world-class plant builder, a bit like Mount Marion. I didn't know how much a lithium plant was going to be. We were building a concentrator twice as big as green bushes. I partnered up with Ellison. He said, I'll fund it through to positive cash flow and have 30% equity. And I thought, well, that sounds like a good idea because I don't know how long a piece of string is. So we partnered up with a 150-year-old German plant builder, 14,500 employees in 95 sites around the world. We split the IP from the plant building arm. Um, the plant building arm is actually, internally, we think it's worth significantly more than the IP royalty portfolio that's been impacted by commodity prices. So I just want to get that through to you. So we've got a unique business model. Um, in terms of actually selling plants rather than trying to do it ourselves. So it's a capital light, low risk. We make our margin up front as we build the plant, so we've got very good margins, because we've got one competitor, and that's Metso. And because Primobius, which we own half of, we don't have to use SMS as a prime contractor, so we've gone to Metso, got them to quote prices about the same. So we don't need to predatory price. We've got the whole market sitting out in front of us. All the big recyclers are in China and they can't come to Europe. In fact, they're asking us to quote to build their plants. Um, so upfront margin, then we get royalties. So what I put here is lithium, nickel and uh, manganese, uh, so and cobalt. So, you know, it's pretty good. Like if you're getting a 10% royalty and we've got five licenses out there at a 10% royalty, and the ore body's more than three ounces, the royalties are pretty good, but they don't come for a little while. So how much do these plants cost? So, you know, our first commercial plant, just order of magnitude for these guys, we've got to tell them how much they cost. They're about 400 million bucks. Um, but the good thing is, recycling is compulsory in Europe, so someone has to build these plants. There's a requirement that they be recycled. Someone has to build the plants. I mean, even on our aggressive scenario, we may not get to over 5% of the market, and that's building a refinery every year. So we tailor these to satisfy their wants and needs. We operate a small battery recycling plant by ourselves, but we provide that service to the German car makers, Mercedes, Volkswagen, Audi, BMW. So we could provide it as principal. We could partner, like we've partnered with Mercedes-Benz, we're building them a plant in the R&D collaboration, but our preferred model is to sell you the plant and license you the technology, you'll get the lowest cost of recycling. But until that point, we actually get paid to recycle batteries and keep the product, so it's great. The needs, license to operate, low cost, low capital. This is the greatest tailwind in the world. Europe's made it compulsory. You either have to recycle or fund the recycling. Either way, we win. And so you've got to get this You've got to meet recycling targets of 90% efficiency and 95% efficiency, which we can do. And all roads lead to fortress Europe. The batteries won't leave. They've got to be recycled. They don't have, they're not endowed with the wealth, mineral wealth that we have. And all roads lead to recycled content going forward. So, you know, we're finding interest from the commodity traders uh, and principal producers because recycled content going forward has to be in the product mix if you want to supply the EVs. So we lower the car maker's battery cost by reducing the cost of the lithium. The lithium is the only non-substitutable part of the battery. It carries the electrons. Everything else can be changed. And we can strip out 85% of the carbon footprint so that the carbon can become a net benefit to the world in one to two years as opposed to seven if you use mine products. 
So we're validating the technology at the moment. We are due to start the hot commissioning of the front section of the plan of Mercedes next week. We have the official opening by the German government, the, Ger the German Chancellor, Olaf Schulz, on October the 21st. Uh, and that is the first of its kind going to a Western car maker. So that, that really takes the risk uh, out of the business and then we start launching into the commercial contracts. So Steel Company in Canada is our first commercial licensee. Uh, we do have an option to buy into that. I've got to say with you know where things are at the moment uh, and the cost of capital, it's unlikely we would be looking to do that. So we would just be supplying them the plant and picking up a royalty. The headline rate's 10%, subject to IRRs. And then we've got a number of private and public MOUs and licenses to third party, Itachi to go up into Japan, Neo Mobility last quarter to go into Thailand, that's half owned by um, Thailand's largest uh, automotive maker, and then the other half shareholders, PTT, which is the national energy company. So fantastic commercial pipeline. And we've got this disciplined product plan. So just going up in managed scales. You know, unfortunately for us, the big poster child in the US last year blew up because they went to a big size without going through what we would consider in mining parlance, just generally accepted principles of, of scaling up, say, by a factor of 10. When you go to 100 and 200, things go wrong and not generally to the positive side. So I guess in summary, you know, there's a significant disconnect. Two years ago, I got a market cap of a billion. I sit up here, I'm happy, but I'm not sure my inherent value is a billion, right? Two years later, I'm sitting here with a market cap of under 50. I'm not happy, but I'm confident that my inherent value is significantly above where I am. So, you know, we've got uh, a fantastic supportive shareholder base. We've got brokers that support us, so we're very grateful to those. And look, you know, we don't live in a bubble. We've got to cut our cloth. We've been reducing our overheads, our, our uh, staff size, and we'll get through these headwinds into better times. We've got a strong team and culture, uh, having been around uh, for 20 odd years. I mean, the founders, board of management are the largest shareholders in our company, we do care. And I think we present a unique proposition because I think we've got you know, fantastic exposure to the commodities and those thematics and what is needed by the market without actually taking into account the upstream mining risk. And I know, and everyone here knows, it's long and hard to develop those. So I think we've got a clear strategy, you know, our processes are environmentally friendly, we sell our, we give our customers a sustainable competitive advantage, we're in that industrial validation, I'm not saying it's without risk, but we are at a very advanced stage. Some pretty smart business models, number one, if you don't have to put any capital in, that sounds good. Uh, and diversified. So each one of those plants, you get eight revenue streams. You get eight products out, eight revenue streams. So every time we build a plant, we've got great confidence on what those royalty, the quantum, and what commodities they are, and we can hedge five. The top five would be lithium, nickel, copper, cobalt, aluminium, and we can hedge them on the LMA. So good times ahead, notwithstanding it's not much fun now. So thank you very much for your attention, and uh, have a good rest of the conference.